And welcome back to West Virginia tonight. West Virginians, of course, are very familiar with FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, because of all the flooding problems we have in the Mountain State. Well, FEMA had its budget hearing in Washington, D.C. today, and presiding over that hearing was Senator Shelley Moore Capito, who uh, is chair of the Appropriations Subcommittee on Homeland Security. Good to be with you again, Senator. Nice to be on. How did the FEMA budget hearing going and will that agency have enough money to deal with if we have floods again in West Virginia or hurricanes in Florida or elsewhere? Well, we know that over the last year we've had some pretty significant issues uh, with hurricanes, with the wildfires in, um, in California and just most recently Nebraska and Iowa seriously underwater with flooding. Uh, the administrator, Peter Gaynor, uh, assured me that there is enough money in the disaster relief fund to cover the present disasters that we see and also to cover what are anticipated to be uh, disasters in the next coming year. Uh, it's billions and billions of dollars. He asked for another $14 billion for next year. And uh, I've worked with my uh, cohort, uh, Senator Tester from Montana, Democrat from Montana, to make sure that FEMA is well funded. Well, obviously, there's a lot of concerns about how the money is spent and distributed. You're certainly well aware of what's going on here in West Virginia. We had uh, four uh, city officials in Richwood charged with criminal violations on Friday because money is not accounted for that came uh, for federal disaster aid. First of all, what's your reaction to what's going on in Richwood with the charges? Well, I think there's nothing more um, frustrating and really sad to me to think that there's any kind of fraud that went on with disaster funding. When people lose their home or they lose their property or lose all of their belongings uh, and, and destruction, the destruction of that flood was just incredible. Uh, and in Richwood particularly, uh, it's, it's very upsetting, I think. So we'll see where the court cases go. Um, but I think every dollar has to be accounted for. It's our taxpayers' dollars, but it's also dollars that are intended to uh, take care of the people who are harmed and not, uh, not used in a frivolous or, or possibly illegal manner. So I'm very concerned about it. Uh, I'm glad that our um, uh, officials are looking at it and our law enforcement officials, and we'll look forward to seeing what happens uh, in the future. But accountability is critical. Transparency is absolutely essential. Well, most of the accountability here is because of State Auditor J.B. McCuskey's investigation. Are you aware of a similar parallel federal criminal investigation? And, and should there be one into where this money all went? You know, I think uh, what, the, what concerns me uh, at, at this point, and I, I congratulate the auditor, J.B. McCuskey, for his great work here, is if FEMA determines that flood monies have not been, or disaster monies have not been used properly, they can, they have within their legal rights to be able to claw that money back. And the state can ill afford that. Uh, and I'm certain that whoever has it doesn't have it anymore if it didn't go to the flood victims. So that's where my area of concern is. I, I, I'm not aware if there's a federal investigation. Uh, usually those things are kept under pretty close wraps. Yeah, they are, and we're not able to confirm it with either the Justice Department or the U.S. Attorney's Office, but it's, yeah. it's, it's going around in the rumor mill here in Charleston, believe me, that something's okay. going on. Uh, the one thing I've got to ask you about, I'm going to hold up my cell phone here, uh, and you may have the same problem too, Senator. I think about 50% of the phone calls I get on my personal and my work cell phone are robocalls, selling me uh, warranties for my car or credit cards. What are you doing in Washington right now? I understand you're working on a bill to try to put a stop to all these robocalls that are driving us all nuts. Well, I'm a, co a major co-sponsor to a piece of legislation that passed out of the Commerce Committee today with my help uh, that would uh, give serious penalties, serious abilities for FCC to shut these things down. I mean, I get them. They're irritating to me as well as everybody. I mean, I, I probably get more complaints about that on an individual level than anything else. And this would... Uh, uh, help track better who's originating these calls. It would also um, be able to give the FCC the ability to uh, levy uh, serious uh, penalties uh, on on the uh, bad actors here. And you know, from a safety perspective, you got to think if if somebody's not answering their phone because there's too many robocalls. They could be missing something that's absolutely critical in their lives, and that's a danger, I think. So not only are they irritating, they're dangerous, and uh, hopefully we can stop them. Uh, I want to stop them. I want to stop them for you and everybody else because people are really tired of them.
Yeah, you're probably going to get 100% backing on that, whether right. you're Democrat or Republican, people right. hate robocalls. Right. We want to thank Senator Shelley Moore Capital for joining us today from Washington, D.C. Safe travel, Senator. Good thank to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you.